about communication and I can't personally talk about communication without first telling you that I have a speech impediment. I stutter. There we go. And uh, stuttering is pretty interesting in that it's an insecurity that is constantly around, right? Every time I um, have to say my name, I stutter pretty much almost all the time. Uh, it's really awesome to have people think you're crazy because you don't know how to say your name. And it's even better when you have to change your drink order at a bar or at Starbucks because you're kind of terrified to to stutter, to say things, right? Uh, so before I go any further, um, I just want to give you a few fun facts about stuttering. Uh, so this is me when I'm three years old. I know, totes adorbs. Uh, and this is around the age that I began to Stutter. Um, and that's actually uh, kind of, you know, run of the mill because, like, something like 85% of kids stutter between the ages of uh, three and five. Um, and then it's also kind of genetic. Uh, my, 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 Parents stuttered, uh, my, my brothers stuttered, I have cousins who stuttered, and, and um, uh, they all um, pretty much uh, stopped stuttering. Um, by the time they were um, around 10 or 12. Um, unfortunately, uh, well, spoiler alert, I guess I should say, I'm 32 and I still have to deal with this thing every single day. Uh, and so um, I developed a lot of ways to kind of cope uh, uh, with stuttering. I would try to um, uh, conceal it, right? Um, I would do this thing where I was thinking about uh, a thing that I, that I, that I wanted to say, and if I thought I was going to come upon a word that I wasn't going to be able to say fluently, I would, I would switch up the word um, before I had to come to it. Um, I spent a lot of time just completely just being immoralized and angry, and I absolutely despised the way that I sounded. And so I came to a point where, where I decided that, you know, I probably um, have to get some help. So I sought out a speech therapy. And my speech therapist, uh, she, she told me uh, that uh, there was actually a conference for people who stuttered. Uh, and and it's put on by um, an high end organization that's called um, 
um, the National Stuttering Association. And it's uh, kind of awesome. Oh, that's not the right slide. Um, because it has the um, very interesting and confusing um, title of NSA. <laughs> and so every time I tell people that I am going to go to this conference, uh, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to the NSA conference. And it's always pretty funny. <laughs> so uh, the first conference I was at was the first time I was completely surrounded by people who stuttered. And so, you know, pretty much my um, entire life, I only thought about uh, the way that I felt and uh, the way that I spoke and, and uh, the way that other people perceived it. Well, the first conference I was at was the first time where I was actually thinking about the way that, you know, people felt when they were talking. Um, um, that was uh, the first time when I wasn't completely, um, completely obsessing over the way that I sounded. I had to be patient because I really wanted to hear the things that the other people there, you know, had to say. Um, and I realized that I was just completely self-involved, right? And that I had to think about the other people and and how they felt when they were communicating with me. So that conference and that experience of having to think about, you know, the other people, it completely changed my view of communication. So the first thing that you have to know um, considering communication is that, oops, sorry, at its core, it's supposed to be an act of great empathy. The problem is that it's pretty much not, okay? And so the way that we approach conversations is kind of horrible, um, and I'm going to explain this to you through a series of photos and gifts because it's 2016 and that's how we communicate with each other. <laughs> so, hypothetically, you have this thing uh, that you want to sh share with someone, okay? So, here's you. And you have this thing that you want to say. You have this awesome idea. And you don't want to like brag or anything, but you think that this idea, it's okay, you know, it's okay. <laughs> so you think about, you know, um, the words that you want to use to describe this thing. You think about how you want to feel. You think about how you want the other person to feel. You Think about how you want them to, uh, to respond. And then you take, you know, the thing, and you present it to the other person, right? And you are so excited, because you know that they're going to think that your idea is like the best idea ever. Well, they respond. And they're not exactly doing back like you thought they would because, I mean, hold on. Obviously, your idea was great and they just totally didn't see it. So here's a problem with how you are presenting your thoughts. It's 
completely uh, self-focused, right? See, see, um, the way that you approach the conversation is entirely about you, right? You don't care what the other person has to say. The only thing that you want is for them to love you and your thoughts the way that, you know, Kanye loves Kanye. And that's just not realistic, right? So this self-focused, oh yeah, I forgot it had words. <laughs> I can't see it. So this uh, self-focused approach to communication is a breeding ground for just pretty bad conversations. And, you know, that can even cause um, problems, especially on teams. So, so, what do you need to do? You have to think about the other person. You need to be a tad bit more empathetic. So, um, Renee Brown believes that empathy fuels connection. And if that's the case, then um, then 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 empathetic communication is going to drive collaboration. And when it comes to building companies and building products and being on teams, you know, collaboration is one of the most important things. But we have a couple of problems. Uh, the first is that collaboration is done almost entirely uh, on the internet. Uh, sites like Twitter and Slack and technologies similar to them are incredibly helpful in 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 sharing and consuming content, right? It helps you feel more connected. Um, and they also help to build a more common ground. Well, the issue there is that you aren't really talking to a person. You are dealing with you know, a, a username, you know, a Twitter handle. It's not a real person. And because of that, the empathy that you have to have in order to truly connect is pretty much gone. So this is a truth that we have to accept to accept. Uh, technology can't replace the social aspect of face-to-face -face com commun communication. Here's another truth. The consistent failures of communication can't be, you know, taken away with software and other, you know, tech tools. You have to confront these issues face to face. Because when you take away Slack and when you take away Twitter and, and cell phones and 
computers, you, you know, are left with a person. So when you're dealing with people, you have to talk to them. And the problem here is that people kind of hate talking to each other, right? I mean, I know that I have an issue with talking, but, well, okay, so my issue's a little bit deeper than most people's, but, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult to talk to people. And conversations where you have to talk about failure are just incredibly hard conversations to have. And so, because of all of those things, Collaboration is extremely difficult. And because of that, collaboration fails. So let's break down the specifics of why collaboration fails. So, so, so we can know exactly how to uh, fix it. So, two of the main reasons why collaboration fails um, is because people are afraid of being wrong, and people are afraid that other people um, don't understand the things that they are attempting to say. So let's talk about uh, the fear of being wrong. Um, so uh, uh, the fear of being wrong is just um, basically the fear of being judged. And I know that a ton of times I have chosen to not talk to people because I was afraid of being wrong. And I was afraid of being judged, right? So, you know, have you ever been um, in a conversation with a coworker or with a friend or with um, a Cost or with a, a partner, and you chose to, you know, be silent because you were afraid of being wrong. It happens to people pretty much every day. Oh, and then here, uh, this episode of Clarity Rock is my favorite one because it's when, you know, Oprah turns out to be. Pam, because I've never been drunk on a plane before, so I, I have no idea what that's all about. <laughs> I've been drunk on many planes, <laughs> just FYI. So the other issue is that people are afraid that um, people aren't going to totally get what they are trying to say. Now, I completely understand this because, um, you know, I stutter and it terrifies me to have to talk to people and then have to like say things, you know, two or three times because they don't totally understand what I'm trying to say. And then uh, in terms of like doing this, you know, in uh, the office, I can't tell you um, the number of times I've been talking to a developer and he's, or she is trying to um, tell me about a very technical thing and I'm a very like non-technical person and the conversation ends pretty abruptly because, you know, they have a hard time explaining, I have a hard time understanding and it's really hard. So how do you fix this? Well, the first thing that you have to do is to speak up because silence kills collaboration. Now, um, 
listening to um, um, a, Uh, listening to what another person has to say doesn't take, you know, um, it doesn't like your ideas aren't any less valuable or valid. Because uh, because because you are you know being quiet while another person is talking about a thing that they uh, would like to talk about. Um, um, that actually enhances the conversation. Now, when you were speaking, uh, think about uh, the listener. What do they need to hear uh, from, 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 from you, 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 in, in order to really um, embrace the, the thing that you were trying to communicate to them. So a thing to keep in mind here is that we're all on different planes um, in intellectually, and that's okay. Uh, speaking to people on their level doesn't compromise the level that you are on. All it does is, is open up the conversation. And uh, when you are listening to a speaker who is having a difficult time co communicating, just think back to this day, right? Like I know that it's, it's challenging to, uh, to, to really hear what I'm trying, excuse me, to say. You have to pay attention. You have to focus. Um, take that same approach when you're when you're listening to uh, the people at work, or when you're listening to your partner, or or your kids. So the main point here is that when you discuss your thoughts and your feelings from a from a place of empathy and you listen to others from that same place you are going to create something that's bigger and better than than anything you could have ever come up with on your own. That takes vulnerability. That's the, the vulnerability to embrace silence or to discuss something that kind of freaks you out. That also takes courage. Uh, the courage to listen to people when they are struggling to communicate their ideas. And the courage to be present when they are being vulnerable. So 
the basis of collaboration is going to be, could be vulnerability, it's going to be courage, and the most important of all, it's going to be empathy. Thank you.